Could Hollywood be using real spells and putting real elements of witchcraft in entertainment, in TV shows and movies? What you're about to watch is a clip that reveals the truth behind some of the most popular TV shows and movies. Rena, I actually want to ask you, this because I say this at conventions a lot, this rumor that I heard, and I want to know if it's true. There's a rumor that production was called by the real, real witch. witches of New Orleans saying you're playing with fire, you got to change up your chants. To... It's true? So in season one, when I was the writer's assistant, I wrote the chants, and I would go online and like look up spells. It's like, why not? And then I'd like change a couple of words. I'd go and I'd, I'd, I'd like figure out a spell, and I'd like go and change a couple of words to French, and a couple of words to like Creole, a couple of words to like Haitian Creole. There, you can you do Google Get Translate. Get difficult. You do Google yeah. trans, Translate yeah. to Haitian Creole, and then I'd like throw some Latin in. And I was like, I was just like making some spells, and then we got a call from a woman in New Orleans who was like, I think that you're playing with fire. I think that you're, you know, you know, what are you trying to do? You're putting these spells in everybody's living room all across America. Like we were like cursing everybody to watch the show. And then um, I started making up a little weirder. <laughs> Take a moment to just really listen to this part. I was just like making some spells and then we got a call from a woman in New Orleans who was like, I think that you're playing with fire. I think that you're, you know, uh, you know, what are you trying to do? You're putting these spells in everybody's living room all across America. How many people, how many homes have watched these shows where real spells are being spoken into their lives, into their living rooms and homes? How many people are unknowingly opening the door to evil, unholy influences, all for the sake of entertainment. Be careful what you watch. For the next few moments, I want you to pay attention as we expose the darkness behind a lot of the entertainment consumed today. One of the current trending movies on Netflix is The Deliverance. For anyone who calls themselves a Christian, you should not watch this movie or any movie in the horror genre because you are literally opening the door to the devil. The aim of this video is not so that you would be fearful, but rather be wise. Be wise when it comes to the entertainment you consume and realize that the Bible is right. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The Deliverance movie is based on real events. In 2014, an article appeared in the Indianapolis Star, and it was headlined, The Exorcisms of Latoya Amons. Here are a few lines from that article. In November 2011, Amons' family moved into a rental house on Carolina Street in Gary, a quiet lane lined with small one-story homes. Big black flies suddenly swarmed their screened-in porch in December, despite the winter chill. After midnight, Campbell and Amons both said, they occasionally heard the steady clump of footsteps climbing the basement stairs and the creak of the door opening between the basement and kitchen. No one was there. Campbell said she awoke one night and saw a shadowy figure of a man pacing her living room. She leaped out of bed to investigate and found large, wet boot prints. So, you see, this family experienced many evil supernatural happenings. But here is where I would like us to be vigilant. In an interview with the director of the film, Lee Daniels, here's what one article reported. In a recent interview with SiriusXM alongside his cast, Daniels said he organized prayer circles on set in a bid to prevent supernatural incidents. Things happen, and I was not going to let things happen on my set. And also, I needed it for me, Daniels said. And even with that, there were still things that happened on the set that was my sister is in every movie that I've ever done as my good luck charm, and she was in the scene with Glenn in the chemo scene, and she's the one that sort of gave her attitude in the chemo scene, Daniel said. And two days later, after being in the chemo scene, she was diagnosed with lung cancer, literally. My dog died on the set. Monique, who plays a social worker in the movie, added that she was hospitalized after filming one particularly dramatic scene. End quote. Talking about evil spirits is a strange thing to many of us today. However, when Jesus walked the earth, he cast out evil spirits. 
He rebuked them. He warned against them, and most importantly, he taught people about them. He taught people about their existence and their tactics. But today, many Christians will quite openly speak about angels, but ignore the reality of demons. Jesus' ministry included teachings about demons and encounters with demon-possessed individuals. So we ought to at least be knowledgeable against the schemes of the kingdom of darkness. Be careful when it comes to these horror films. The supernatural world is real, but so is God. If you ever feel afraid, recite and declare Luke 10 verse 19, which says, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. When you see this kind of imagery, what does it represent? What kind of message does it send? What ideology is being celebrated? Now, let me ask you this. As a Christian, how can you listen to an artist who uses devilish imagery in their performances or in their videos? There's a growing awareness of and concern about the entertainment industry's dark side. References to the occult and satanic worship have become commonplace. In this video, I'd like to dive in and discuss the evil themes and satanic agenda behind a lot of secular music. Should Christians be listening to secular music? Should Christians be watching anything and everything produced by the entertainment industry? Well, in this video, we are going to look at the dark side of music and entertainment. Here are a few lyrics from world-renowned rapper Eminem. In a song called Evil, he says, Evil, yeah, I'm so evil. Rotten to the core, a twisted cerebral. I'm so evil, so evil. It's obvious that I'm not like other people. Then in a song called Lucifer, he says, Now my followers are like a satanic cult. Yeah, they listen to me like when Manson spoke. At least that's what it seems like. And I'm Lucifer and Dre's the producer for the Antichrist. This is just one artist, but I'm simply giving you a few examples that illustrate just how aggressive the spirit of Antichrist is operating in this world. So many things are pitched and accepted and even celebrated in this world when, in reality, these things are anti-God. The Bible warned us in 1 John 4 verse 3 saying, And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. One of the biggest names in music right now is Taylor Swift. She is one of the world's best-selling artists. But for a moment, let's take a look at the lyrics in some of the songs in her most recent album. In the song titled Guilty as Sin, some of the lyrics read, What if I roll the stone away? They're going to crucify me anyway. What if the way you hold me is actually what's holy? If long-suffering propriety is what they want from me, they don't know how you've haunted me. So stunningly, I choose you and me, religiously. And then in the song, But Daddy, I Love Him, it says, I just learned these people only raise you to cage you. Sarah's and Hannah's in their Sunday best, clutching their pearls, sighing, what a mess. I just learned these people try and save you, because they hate you. God, save the most judgmental creeps, who say they want what's best for me. Sanctimoniously performing soliloquies I'll never see, thinking it can change the beat of my heart when he touches me and counteract the chemistry, and undo the destiny. You ain't gotta pray for me, me and my wild boy, and all this wild joy, if all you want is gray for me. Now, there are those who will say it's just music, or that the lyrics, well, let me bring this article to your attention. Premier Christianity reported the following, and I quote, It's true that Swift has referred to herself as a Christian, and has sung about praying to Jesus. The problem is, 
There are so many new age and occult themes that appear not just in her lyrics, but on her social media pages and during her onstage performances. This has led to claims from the former Boyzone singer Shane Lynch that Swift performed satanic rituals on stage. In an interview with Irish newspaper Sunday World, Lynch said of Swift, You watch one of her shows, and she has two or three demonic rituals to do with the pentagrams on the ground, to do with all sorts of stuff on her stage. There are other reasons to be concerned, too. Swift makes a devil's horn symbol while performing the song Cruel Summer, which references her love interest, grinning like a devil. In the music video for her song Willow, Swift and her dancers are dressed as a coven of witches in the forest, wearing black robes and carrying golden orbs. The song has had a couple of remixes, the Lonely Witch and the Dancing Witch versions. Willow is a traditional material for making magic wands. Her song Karma glorifies the unchristian concept of having to live multiple lifetimes to work off our bad deeds. The lyrics depict karma as a god. All this has led to some Christians to speculate on whether Swift is a witch or even a Satanist." End quote. Now, Swift is just one example among others. Many entertainers now, young and old, freely speak about their involvement in New Age, witchcraft, and the occult. The desensitized youth of today view such announcements as more enlightened than dangerous or repulsive. Vanessa Hudgens, a Disney starlet who starred in television and movies, told the multimedia brand Nylon in April 2023 that she's always felt drawn to witchcraft. She boldly said yes when they asked if she felt like a witch, adding, I've always been drawn toward the darkness and the unknown, as well as herbalism, ever since I was a kid. Hudgens told the reporter that she had her awakening when filming one of the Princess Switch movies, and that to her, being a witch to her means connecting to my angels, my ancestors, my spirit guides, my spiritual brigade. She also revealed she has a gift of vision and has seen ghosts for as long as she can remember. So, why does all of this matter? Why should conservative parents and Christians be concerned about what is happening in the entertainment world? Maybe you're not even familiar with the movies, TV shows, or actors I've mentioned so far. Perhaps you're thinking, this topic doesn't really concern me. I don't watch or support those kinds of TV shows, movies, or listen to dark-spirited themed music. Should I be concerned about this? Absolutely, yes. In Ezekiel 33, we read that God desires good people, His people, to be watchmen. The term watchmen refers to a person who has concern for the welfare of others, particularly the spiritual welfare of others. We need discernment. And I believe another term for discernment is spiritual insight. You are in sight of the spiritual. You are considering what type of atmosphere is being created by this movie, by this show, or by this game. You are considering if the music you are listening to glorifies God or takes you away from God. Spiritual insight will have you asking questions about the artist and their life and their beliefs. Every believer should have a measure of the Holy Spirit to help them discern decisions and choices in everyday life. In today's world, the growing flirtation with evil the growing acceptance of engagement in witchcraft, the occult, Satanism, and the dark spiritual realm can only lead to disaster. It poisons the mind and soul. Satan is the puppet master of all of this. Like the poison apple in the story Snow White, he disguises what is evil and dangerous so that it appears to be lovely and good. 
He does this in many ways, including employing desensitization techniques, wrapping dark content in comedy, and using popular young actors and music artists to say, it's no big deal. Many today say that asking for guidance or power or energy from the dark side is fine. They insist it is not dangerous, not a problem. But it is dangerous. There is a problem. When we play with fire, we get burned. It is as simple as that. The Bible says that Satan's business is to steal, kill, and destroy. He is called the destroyer. He will steal your joy. He will destroy your happiness, your family. He will destroy your life if you give him an opportunity. What does scripture say to do? It says, do not give Satan an opportunity. Furthermore, the Bible has plenty to say when it comes to witchcraft or those interested in dabbling in paranormal activity. It says in Deuteronomy 18, verse 9 to 12, When you come to the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who practices divination, or tells fortunes, or interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or a charmer, or a medium, a necromancer, or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And then, Zechariah 10, verse 2, warns, Diviners see lies. They tell false dreams and give empty consolation. Therefore, the people wander like sheep. They are afflicted. And finally, the Apostle John wrote in 1 John 4, Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. So, here is what we should do. We ought to adhere to the biblical challenge to run from evil do not look upon it, wrote the prophet Habakkuk. Remember, Satan is the great deceiver. He is an expert in making the dangerous seem benign and the dark things seem attractive. He is a liar. His intent is to deceive and destroy and lure you away from where God wants you to be. Scripture calls believers to be sanctified to be in the world, but not of the world, to be set apart and not engaged in that which does not honor the Lord. As you consider the challenge in this teaching, let me leave you with these words from the Apostle Peter. He writes in 1 Peter 5, verse 8, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Recent news events in the property sector have been focused on squatters, a person who lives in an empty building or area of land without the permission of the owner. USA Today reports the following. In Maryland, a woman returned from vacation to find two squatters in her bed. They were not only living in her house, but had also sold about $50,000 of her furniture. It is a pattern being played out in many cities in the United States. It is also common in Europe, where squatting has become a political movement with support from the left. Another publication, the Daily Mail, reports the following. Squatter's rights is a common law principle where unauthorized intruders exploit legal loopholes in an attempt to assert residency of unoccupied homes. In order to evict a squatter, homeowners face significant financial losses in the form of legal fees, potential property damage, and lost income. 
Evicting squatters can also be a months-long and arduous process due to backlogs in the courts and overwhelmed police forces across the country. Reports of angry homeowners being helpless to remove squatters from their home have been booming in recent months, with some serial squatters refusing to leave residences for over a year. Now, I would like to talk to you about a different kind of squatter, the spiritual kind. The Bible has something to say about property rights as it outlines clearly that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, consecrated to God and sacred. And so, just as a squatter has no real or legal right to possess a home they don't own, a demon has no right to possess or squat on a Christian who is filled with the Holy Ghost. And the concept is not new. Paul's words in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 are an unwavering voice reminding Christians for hundreds of years that we are not on our own. We are bought at a very precious price, the life of Christ Jesus himself. This affirms our body as a literal habitation for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus gave this illustration of what I would like to call a spiritual squatter. When an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert, seeking rest but finding none. Then it says, I will return to the person I came from. So it returns and finds its former home empty, swept and in order. Then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they all enter the person and live there. And so that person is worse off than before. That will be the experience of this evil generation. Notice the sequence of events. An evil spirit leaves a person. It goes out and seeks rest, but it has nowhere to go. It then decides to head back to the person it came from. It finds its former home. Note how the Bible uses the word home when referring to the person. It returns to the former home and finds it empty and then brings seven other spirits more evil than itself. So in a sense, we are being told that evil spirits have no right to possess us. Imagine the scenario. You are a homeowner with a beautifully furnished home, carefully decorated with love and paying the utmost attention to details. The walls are covered with beautiful art pieces and the shelves filled with memories that have been cherished for decades. Every corner of your home has a sense of warmth, peace, and in a way, your home can be a reflection of your character and personality. But what if, as time passes and you become preoccupied with your busy life, this leads to neglecting the home and before you know it, this once spotless dwelling starts to gather dust? The vibrant colors start to fade and a space that once was bright and welcoming starts to feel dim and nearly unlivable. Shadows form in those neglected rooms and in them, unseen and unheard, lurk the very worst kind of unwanted guest, the squatters. In the flesh, squatters are unlawful tenants that take up residence in homes and rooms that have been utterly forgotten. They have no right to be there. They have no claim to ownership, but they persist in their attempt to make the space their own by the simple act of not leaving. Demons work the same way in the spirit realm, trying to overtake the sacred Christian soul. They thrive on darkness, feed on fear, chaos and doubt, and slowly drive the joy and peace far from the believer. Just as a homeowner would never allow squatters to take over their home, as children of God, we should never allow demons to infiltrate our souls. Our bodies aren't just a physical vessel. They are holy temples where the Spirit of God dwells. But how can we prevent these squatters from making their abode in our lives? First, we must remember that we are called to guard our minds and hearts against the enemy and all his gruesome schemes. It's extremely important that we stay vigilant in our faith, steadfast no matter what happens. Ephesians chapter 6 tells us that our struggle isn't really against flesh and blood, but rather against the forces of evil in heavenly realms. These are spiritual squatters, and this is a spiritual battle in which we fight for the sanctity of our souls. We must keep these temples pure and never leave them empty, 
even if they are swept and in order. Physical homeowners secure their homes with locks, alarm systems, and lighting to ensure thieves, robbers, and squatters have no opportunity to breach their house. But we can also arm ourselves and our holy temple. We always have the full armor of God available to us, with which we can battle even on the darkest night. We can take the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, and ensure those squatters do not take up residence in our lives. One of the primary principles taught in military training is, be aware of your surroundings. This principle is called situational awareness. The trainee is intentionally put in stressful scenarios and purposefully surrounded by higher ranking officers to force them to stay vigilant and aware at all times. If the trainee is not maintaining situational awareness, they will be caught in a position of being unprepared and will fall victim to reprimand or consequences. Of course, in an actual battle situation, the consequences will be more significant than push-ups or being yelled at. Consequences of poor situational awareness in battle are life and death. Just as there is situational awareness in a real-life war, there is such a thing as spiritual awareness for the Christian man or woman. If the believer is not aware of their spiritual surroundings, they too will be caught off guard, unprepared, and will fall victim to the consequences. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, verse 11 to 13, Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Spiritual warfare is real. As believers, we have a real enemy, and we are in a real conflict. We are in a war that is raging in the invisible, spiritual realm. And the thing about this kind of battle is that you can't fight your enemy physically. This is why the Apostle Paul wrote, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. And it's true. It's not against the things of this world. As a believer, you're not fighting people. You're not just fighting circumstances. No, you're fighting the spirit behind the person. And you're fighting the devil behind the situation. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places, according to the Word of God. If we will continue to pray, fast, and study the mighty Word of God, our spiritual defenses will be strengthened day by day. This, in turn, gives us the authority and boldness to evict and block any demonic squatter who intends to or tries to take over our temple. We reclaim the beauty and reverence in this space by restoring them to their rightful state, standing firm in our unwavering faith and, if necessary, casting the demons out in the mighty name of Jesus. We never have to bow to the deception that comes from the enemy's lies. We can stand firm in the knowledge and faith that we are children of God, beloved, cherished, and known as the apple of His eye. But it's just as important that we understand how to keep our bodies as temples that are fit for the Holy Ghost. If you own a home, you will keep it clean and welcoming, well-tended and in good working order. And the same goes for the dwelling place of the Spirit of God. One of the best ways to protect our temple is continually investing in our spiritual lives. Invest in your relationship with the Lord. When we nurture this relationship, we create and strengthen the barrier against the forces of darkness that want to squat in our lives. At the same time, we offer the Holy Ghost a bright, clean, well-kept sanctuary to dwell in where He can help us keep out the demonic entities that want to live there at all costs. We should always remember that we are never alone in this particular battle because God is always with us. 
life is full of challenges, and sometimes giving up seems like a genuine option, but it's not. We can overcome any obstacle and maintain a spiritual dwelling that is always welcoming to the Holy Ghost when we work to keep clear from any and all uninvited guests. Let's always be mindful of how sacred it is that our bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost and treat them with the respect and reverence they deserve. The world may be filled with darkness, but our temples can be a beacon of hope for someone who is struggling to keep their own space free. And that's one of the best ways to evict a squatter and keep them out forever. Start your own spiritual neighborhood watch today by sharing this with those who may not already know these truths. Psalm 23 verse 4 Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In this life, it's easy to sometimes be discouraged by the darkness we see all around us. We may even undergo spiritual attacks of our own. But we can rest in the knowledge that God will be with us through every battle. He will not abandon us to be defeated. He will not remove His faithful love from us and leave us to fend for ourselves. Satan is always looking for opportunities to lead people away from God and set them on a path to destruction. His tactics can be fierce. Temptation can be compelling. At times, we may be in a position where we have more questions than answers when it comes to God. But I want to remind you that we have a Savior in Jesus. Yes, we may be attacked by fear at some point, but we have a Savior in Jesus Christ. 1 John 4, Chapter 4 Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. The way we beat the devil is not by being stronger, smarter, or faster than him. The way we beat the devil is by calling upon the name he cannot stand. The name of Jesus Christ. The way we beat the devil is by abiding in the shadows of the Almighty. Jesus is the light that drives out the darkness. At the name of Jesus, Satan has to flee. Demons have to tremble. And nature has to bow down. Christ alone has ultimate authority over all creation. And He has promised to be with us in every struggle. Sometimes we can't avoid passing through the waters of life. Sometimes we may be surrounded by evil on all sides. We may not be able to change our circumstances, but if we can only walk by faith, not by sight, we will see the hand of God moving and protecting us from harm. He has already declared that no weapon formed against us shall stand. And if He is for us, who can be against us?